So did the Welsh have a big problem with Bigger being out? And what can the All Blacks bring this autumn? And I thought you were going to score. Ask a better question, you get a better answer. Oh, sure. Sure. Hi guys, welcome back. Let's go through the Welsh squad. I'm going to pick the best 15 as I see it and I'm also going to talk about the All Black squad which was out a while ago but I haven't been able to talk about. So let's get into this Welsh squad and the big news there, Dan Bigger hasn't been included. Will he come back later into the series? We're not sure but it's a big loss. He's easily their best 10 and their captain. Talisman is definitely a good description of him for sure. We've also got Liam Williams out, which is a blow, but there are some returning players to boost the ranks, to kind of balance that out maybe. Lee Halfpenny coming back in, hasn't played for ages. Ken Owens, Justin Tipperick, the same, haven't played for ages. Absolute class, loads of experience. Yeah, maybe getting on a little bit, but I still think they've absolutely got it. And I think these are three guys that go to the World Cup if they are fit so coming in at the right time even though they're not fully stacked those three certainly help a few uncapped players which we'll go through as well okay uh, Sam Costello is a player who I've been following for a while I watched him in the under 20s absolutely amazing tore it up in the under 20s almost unplayable at times takes a while for young players to come through into seniors but I knew I was going to see him at some point but we see him now now that injuries are bigger maybe letting him in got a few other players Joe Hawkins under 20s captain of the under 20s he's a center Rio Dyer a speedy winger Josh McLeod's been around for a little bit at 25 years old was in some squads but didn't play due to injury there is a little captaincy issue with no Dan Bigger. Could go Alan Wynne Jones, could go Ken Owens, fine. But you'd have to guarantee them starting spots, and I'm not sure they're quite there yet. So my option would be Adam Beard. Definitely guaranteed a starting spot in the pack where you want your captain, really, I would say anyway. So yeah, guaranteed starter. Have that leadership experience, Adam Beard, for me at the moment. Anyway, maybe not all the way to the World Cup, um, especially if Bigger comes back, of course. Let's just have a little look at the squad I put on the side there. It's in positions. There's a lot of mid-range front rows here, mid-range props. They're getting their experience. They are ready for the World Cup for sure. There's a few good battles going along. I like um, the Ryan Eli Elias Lake Owens battle. I actually see that. That could be quite close there. Elias, you know, has the nod at the moment, I think. So that could change. Yeah, plenty of experience in those props. Maybe just Sam Wainwright, the inexperienced one there. Got some good second row options. Adam Beard. Uh, ben Carter is starting to rack up his caps. Six um, six caps. Big, strong guy. Like to see a bit more of him. Alan Wynne-Jones. Every time I see the number of caps he has, it's ridiculous. 153 at the moment. Rowlands has been a regular starter as well. So there's some good competition there. Into the back row, we've got the ever-reliable Talupi Falatau there. Nearing 100 caps. He's class. Experienced Dan Lydia. I think there's going to be plenty of experience in this Welsh team going into the World Cup. That's not a problem. McLeod, I've mentioned. Morgan's a good back rower. Rafael, I think, is amazing. He's only got three caps. Morgan's got three caps. There's going to be some good battles here. Then another of those experienced returners, Tipperick. And then we've got Christ Juinza, who's been playing really well for Exeter. He's improved since last year. He could definitely get some game time. One to keep your eye on. We knew he's a talent, but I think he's kind of grown into his body now, I would say. The Welsh always blessed for scrum halves. You know, they can actually leave Gareth Davis out, which seems a bit crazy, but they're trying a blacker in there as well. Hardy and Thomas Williams probably scrapping it out for the start. So as always, plenty of nine options. Covering bigger, we've got Anscombe, we've got Priestland, plenty of experience. Then the uncapped Costello, who may get a little bit of game time, maybe not too much. But again, it's a scrap probably between Anscombe and Priestland. In the centres, I think we've got a good list here. We've got some experience, North returns, Tompkins, Watkin, any of those guys could start. And then you've got the inexperienced Hawkins who can learn from those three. So that's a nice mix. I like it. Back three is looking pretty good, to be honest, apart from Liam Williams. You know, they're fully stacked there. The big guys in Adams and Cuthbert, Young Dyer, they can plenty to learn off, especially with Halfpenny back in the squad. And then Lewis rees Samet, who's absolutely on top of his game for Gloucester, as quick as ever, a bit more mature. I expect big things from him. So my best Welsh 15 as I see it right now, I'm going to reward the front row that did so well in South Africa, especially at scrum time. So Thomas Elias Lewis starts at the moment. 
I am bringing Alan Wynne Jones back in. Roland's unlucky, but I think getting Alan Wynne Jones back up to speed on the international scene is a big, you know, target I think for Wales in these internationals. Beard there at five, the big man is my captain. Then plenty of experience in the back row in Tipperick and Falatau. Yes, I know Tipperick playing a bit out of position at six, but I want Rafael to play and I really want Tipperick to play. That's exciting to me. Tipperick, Rafael, Falatau, I love that. Rafael so good over the ball, could allow Tipperick to wander a bit further out. That could be really dangerous. Hardy's the man at nine at the moment. Very impressive how he's worked his way to the top of the pile. I thought Thomas Williams was going to be the man for a while. Gareth Davis was the man. You know, in the past, I've even been able to ditch uh, Reese Webb. So always a big turnover on nines, but can Hardy keep it till the World Cup? Anscombe's my man, definitely at 10 instead of bigger. He's a bit more exciting, a bit more creative than me. Um, and to think he was going to be the starting 10 going into the last World Cup, hopefully he makes his you know, his full turnaround comeback, if you like, from that knee injury to make this World Cup. That would be a good story. Adams, the danger man on one wing. Tompkins and North, I love that. The size, the power, a bit of creativity as well. There's good balance there. The speed of Reece Samet and the experience of Halfpenny, who probably goal kick, or I don't know actually, but could well goal kick. I like it a lot. I think it's a good starting 15. Tell me what yours would be. Now, at this point, I want to mention the amazing new logos done for me by Jamie, a viewer of the channel, done a great job. Uh, check those out on the channel if you haven't seen them already. Really clean, really crisp, very modern. He's a first-class graphic designer from the University of Portsmouth, loves his rugby, plays at Twickenham, supports Harlequins. He does a branding design, website design, point-of-sale, promotional material, all that good stuff, up-and-coming designer. I've got all his details in the description below, and I'll pop them up on the screen, so get hold of him if you need some design work. Top man. Now, I did just want to mention New Zealand. I know their uh, squad has come out a while ago, but I haven't managed to comment on it. And the bulk of what we saw in the Rugby Championship is back. But there's some really good battles here. We've got the older La 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 Twinga Fassi back in the props, fighting it out with the youngsters. Love that. Um, Fainga Nuku returns on one wing. Um, He's probably up against Clark for that power winger role. Or, I mean, could you play both? Probably not. Anton Leonard Brown, who's been a, a favourite for the All Blacks, comes back in finally. Aynor's a really good all rounder. I think he's probably more fighting out for that all round bench spot rather than a start. Um, there is a few um, problems in midfield, of course. Depay was out with that horrible injury. Good, he's still out. But those two. Coming back in is pretty good. Plus, we get to see, hopefully, RTS, uh, Roger Tuivasa Shek. You know, what an absolute talent, attacking-wise, stepping-wise. Has he got the all-round game? Hopefully, we get to see it. And then Stephen Parafita is, you know, really playing third fiddle in the fly-half stakes, but we may see him as a versatile player as well. Hopefully, he gets some game time. That'll be interesting. Into the hookers, I can't really see Coles and Taylor, no matter what they do, knocking um, Takiyahu off his number one perch, especially they can't touch his physicality. The props I mentioned, I like that battle between young and old. Are there, is there going to be change in the Retallic Whitelock pairing? Probably not. Barrett's probably going to be there as a six or a replacement. Vie needs game time. I keep saying this like a broken record. Tough to get in there, but you've got to get him game time if he's going to be the future. Then we still have the age-old problem, if you like, in the loose forwards with Kane as captain. He's a good player, but does he guarantee a start just on his performance? I'm not so sure. So it kind of ties your hands a little bit. Papali, he will get less game time because of this. Frizzell was probably my first choice six, but he, he's got a lot of um, fierce competition with Scott Barrett, Akira Yuan. He's probably slightly better in attack, so that's really interesting. So Tutu's a hell of a player, but is he going to see much game time when he's got Ardy Surveyor ahead of him? I don't know. In the backs, I think Aaron Smith's actually a little vulnerable here. Christie didn't make a move in the rugby championship, but maybe Fakatava can come back in. Didn't have a great start with the All Blacks, but he has the physical ability to light it up. Probably the most explosive of all the halfbacks. And the first five eights or fly half number tens, whatever you want to call them. Like I mentioned, it's probably going to be Moanga. Um, Bowden Barrett there as the versatile guy, maybe 15. Perifita picking up the crumbs probably. 
Midfielders we've mentioned, it's going to be a good battle there. I do think there's still, you know, room for shifting around the midfield. Ioane, Ricky Ioane's probably got 13 nailed down, but 12 certainly something uh, to come back in. Maybe Leonard Brown will have a charge at that. Do we see um, Jordi Barrett in at 12, Havili back at 12? Some big questions there. Be interesting to see, but they've got options. And because of the number of centres they've picked, I think it looks like Jordi Barrett's going to be pushed back into the back three, which could be a mistake. Let me know if, if you agree. Will Jordan was brilliant in the rugby championship, but we want to see him from fullback as well. Sever Reese, great player, top finisher, but what competition he has. A few guys there unavailable, but you know, not a lot. Blackadder, again, a guy I'm desperate to see in this squad, still not ready, but fairly fully stacked, should be really dangerous, difficult to beat. Let me know what you think of that squad and the Welsh squad. 